Hey everybody, welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn and grow. That is the subject of today's video. I bet you're really curious. Yes, so am I. So, hey, let's get started. Okay, so today, this is going to be what I'm calling a learn and grow exercise. Like I said in the introduction, I wanted to create this book for a while. You've seen them everywhere. I'm not even sure what they're called. I'm sure there's some official name. Maybe it's even Copic and I just, I don't think that's, I don't think that's right. I, I don't know what I'm talking about half of this, oh, this video. No, I'm all stressed out, but not. This is just gonna be a lot of fun. I am making a, it's about a six by eight book, hardcover with about a one and a half inch middle. It's not quite one and a half inches in the middle. Currently, I am covering this book. I'm using 49 and Markets Plum Grove. It is a collection. Actually, scrapbook.com has a bundle on their site. That, of course, will be linked. And so as we walk through this book and I explain the doings of this book, I, you're going to probably watch and think, what is she doing? But don't worry, because we'll fix it in the end. So I might have to actually make another one. But in the meantime, I have chipboard, six by eight chipboard. I'm covering it. I think this is actually like you, sh like I showed you some of the solids from the Serenity collection, just because I didn't want my covers to have a lot of pattern. I want to come back in and add some other elements to it at another point. So I have front and back covered. This is where it starts getting a little dicey. And what I'm going to do is you're going to watch me bring in this. It's a fabric washi. It's probably about three inches wide. And I like the fabric idea for binding books like this because it has such great movability. Now this particular washi, it's also from 49 and Market. It's a very white, very cool toned text, which I love it. But my, and I covered the outside with this later on, I will trim that. I don't want that actually coming over to the other side. So I'll fix that as you will see. But I decided as I was working this, that it was too cool. So I'm going to come in here and mess with some, with some paint. In the end, you're going to see that the paint just doesn't work. A couple reasons I should have known this before, but you know, sometimes, honestly, sometimes I think we just have to try things and play with things, give ourselves time and space just to kind of make mistakes. So this is an antique white. So I thought, oh sure, antique white would be great. Look how yellow it comes in on my project. Super yellow. I was getting a little, oh, this is not quite what I want. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I'm trying to think, do I, yeah, see, I'm, I am comparing it with what I know the inside of my book is going to look like. So I brought in some Dilutions white linen and wanting the idea of the white to tone down all that yellow. And while it did that, as you see, it's still not there. It, isn't that crazy how yellow an antique white can be? Its colors are amazing. And again, it was really a great exercise in good idea, Jane, but maybe not. Maybe you should have thought this through a little better. And so I kept messing with this and fuddling with it. That's our word here on the channel. If you're new here, we like to fuddle with things. And I decided at this point that I am just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to, I actually replaced it, right? I took that other piece out completely, which is the beauty of paper and chipboard and washi. We can start all over without completely destroying a project. And so that's what I did. I just relayed in, and that's probably actually maybe closer to like a four inch washi now that I'm looking at it. And so my, my original concept was on point, might I add. But sometimes the best laid plans do not quite work that way. So I'm leaving it at this point. And I'm just now going through the motions of covering the inside of this chipboard. This is also one of the quote unquote solids because it's not completely solid, but they call it a solid. Maybe they call it foundations in the 49 and market that belongs to the Plum Grove. So when you're adding paper to chipboard 
Remember, you can always trim off the excess if you need to do just that, which is just what I am doing there. So now you see I'm returning to the middle washi and I'm adding Tattered Rose Distress Oxide. And actually it's hard to tell in this screen, but actually it does take some of the colors. So that's kind of a fun idea for that plain washi for the future. Back to binding. I'm continuing to make mistakes because actually as I'm adding this washi tape to those front folds, my, my, my the spirit within me is saying, you know, this, this isn't going the way you want it to go. And the swashi will change as we go down the road. I, I don't even want that as, as it turns out. But as I continue to do this, here's where, okay, brace yourselves. I'm making holes. I'm not even going to show you all of this, but I'm making my holes with my template. Okay, great idea on point. And I don't have it all, so I'm just going at it with the craft pick that I do have. Okay, yeah. You'll see how the rest of that looks later. We're done with that for now because at this point we are going to make our inside signatures. Hang on friends, it really does turn out really well. These signatures are going to measure five and a half by eight and seven, uh, seven and seven eighths. So I'm cutting this as seven and seven eighths. This is double-sided Plum Grove pattern paper. Then when I turn it, I'm going to score it at five and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that. And when I fold it, you're going to see there's a little extra piece because these are obviously 12 inches long. I don't cut it off. I come in instead and I'm going to create a score right where the page ends because I want to make a little pocket. And so by, by just folding that over, I'm just going to add a little bit of double-sided adhesive to the very top and then obviously to the very bottom, or maybe not obviously, and then fold it over and it just becomes a small pocket. And for what the purpose of this journal is, which I will talk more about at the end of this video, that's perfect. I just need those little slots there. Now the inside of the covers are going to be made up of uh, white solid cardstock as well as a dot grid. And I showed you the dot grid. It's by Rodia. I will link that below. I love that paper, especially for some of the charting that I'm going to want to do. So I'm just I'm just folding it over in half. It's it already lines up to within five and a half at at least. But I'll end up actually trimming that a little bit once it gets inside its covers. Then I take a six by eight piece of pattern paper from Plum Grove. I score it right down the middle so it folds over at three inches, trimming that down because it's an eight inches. So it just needs a little bit taken off there. It's just going to be a piece of interest when you open up the signature or the little mini journal, if you will. And that's all that was about. I just I just love these patterns. So I, I'm not afraid to have some pattern in this book because it's just so beautiful. That's how that looks. Okay. We're going to return now to actually how this will go inside of the cover. I'm using the template again to make my marks. And I'm using a crocodile. I have to punch this from the outside. And in a minute here, I'm going to just kind of explain a little bit how I'm actually then putting it in the book. But then we're going to return to this again. So I'm, I'm not trying to be too out of place and out of order here. You, you'll, you'll be able to put this all together here. Okay, I wanted to pop in here real time with this. This is a little tricky, and this isn't a way I go about, I might have said this already um, previously, but this isn't a typical way I go about putting an album together. And so I'm kind of feeling my way through this. I've watched lots of these. There's some extremely professional bookmakers out there who have all the lovely tools and who just, you know, they've done this again and again. I mean, that's the thing, right? Let's not ever forget that. If there's something that you're not feeling terribly confident at or, oh, that looks a little rough or whatever, more than likely it's because we just haven't done it a lot. And so I just want to throw that in there and make sure we all understand that. So I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I'm trying to decide how small to make these. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we are always of the mindset in our making. And when we, when we're wanting to make something a little bit brand new ish that we realize, um, you know, if it's not perfect, it's never going to be perfect anyway, but if it's not quite up to what maybe you visualized, it's just going to require more time. I'm, I'm curious to know how the rest of this turns out because this does look pretty rough. And when it's sitting up on my shelf, 
that's what I'm going to be looking at. So I'm just going to see. I'm going to see what that looks like and kind of continue to play with this idea. One more thing I want to add for all my fuddling with this middle fabric washi. Very little of it is going to show and I kind of suspected that. I have three more signatures to add to this. Very little of this is going to show. I'm not going to worry about the fact that it has more of a cool tone to it based on the rest of my papers that are warm tone. So just wanted to share that little tidbit with you too. Okay, so in the spirit of learning together, which is what I am just cracking this up to be. Um, remember when I said earlier when I was working on this that I wasn't sure how I was liking this? Well, I didn't like it at all. And I kind of went ahead and reworked it and I didn't record it. Let me show you what I did. So I took a piece of paper I measured this width, which is about one and a quarter. And then I added about another probably half an inch plus. There's no direct measurements here. And that's because this spine, this spine is going to be whatever size you want it to be. So if you're going to follow along, but <laughs> if you follow along with this, let me know because I'm not sure how well I actually taught this today, but really, honestly, this is just, just sharing something that I'm learning and then maybe I'll revisit it again. So I really remember when I was using this tool for making my holes. Yeah, that was completely inadequate. And you knew that, didn't you? You were watching me do this. So after I recovered my spine, no washi tape, just pattern paper, then I used my crocodile and I used the small punch here. Can we see that? And I basically went in as far as I could go and then punched these four holes. And I did that to the top. And I, I still did a sort of template just so I was lining up as best as I could. So I still kind of made a template. These are my punched, um, this is my actual punched holes. And ignore that, those are my punched holes. So I would still suggest make a template if you just want to make sure you have things lined up just as good as you possibly can. So I think that looks actually so much better, right? Which means I had to go in and I had to change the um, my holes inside. So I, you can see here where that's the old hole. And so I'm just, for those papers that I already punched, I'm just embracing the double holes. So what this looks like then, when you have a signature made, and I realized, okay, so are these, yes, I'm talking to myself for a minute. So this is also a previously made signature here. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna come in here. I'm in, in here as far as I can be. My seam is in the middle of that opening and now I have a better hole and it will line up with what I have established on my covers now. So I wanted to come in here and chat about that for a moment and so then I will just now go in and attach those to the inside of here. I have one more set of holes, right? I have three, two, I have I have another book to make still. I will I will eventually have three. For now I'm gonna, I'll eventually have four. For now I'm gonna do three, um, basically because I'm just not sure quite yet what I want that fourth one to be. But in the meantime, I have three lovely signatures and I've already, I'm gonna show you how I did this next. For my 90 day, I'm taking vellum, I'm doubling it up and I have two pieces layered of the nine and the zero. I'm going to use a little bit of the dot roller to layer these one on the other because it you can just see it better but you still have that whole ethereal feel of the of the vellum of the vellum and then I'm going to sew it in place and then I'll just add the day behind it. Okay, now for a little bit this book is going to want to pop open this part of this uh really heavy paper on the binding and that's okay. So I've taken a one inch strip of pattern paper. I had to attach it back here to another strip because it's not gonna all go around and I don't want it super tight. And so down here, I'm gonna just go ahead and trim that out. 
and I snagged some Velcro circles. You can find these at the Walmart. You can find them at the craft store. And so what I want to do is these are already, I'm going to make sure my, I'm trying to make sure that this is straight. Okay. I'm going to put one part on this piece of paper, bring this around. As my book relaxes, I, I might not need this. I don't know. I think the ideal thing to do is to add the Velcro right on top of there. And then I'm going to shimmy this in such a way, again, not super tight. I don't need this to be not removable. I want it to be removable. Because then, so nice. I, oh, I like that. Something worked. <laughs> Okay, so from the Plum Grove Ephemera, plus some chipboard pieces, I have some chipboard elements as well. I have grabbed just my staple pieces for when I like to create these clusters. So I have a ticket. I have my background already. I have a ticket. I have a label. I also think I, I need a little bit more um, to kind of anchor everything but this is too big. So something I do love to do. Now these vintage labels are from Sizzix and Tim Holtz. It's this package here. And we are reaching for these all the time with these embellished clusters. So that's what that looks like with that etched edging. I really do love that. So we got that's gonna hit there. Probably like that, like this. Nope, I need my tin to show a little bit. Um, I have, I found this little piece from the ephemera now and later. I thought that was completely appropriate and kind of putting this on here first and then figuring out how the today is going to go on here is my idea. And then I'll pop in this heart and of course we need a little bit of foliage, right? So there we go. I'm going to speed this up as these layers actually get adhered one on the other and just talk a little bit about the why of this particular journal. This ambitious, rather ambitious journal that I made, it's a 90 day journal. You saw us put together the 90 day. Um, it's going to be my fall journal, not an October book, nor a gratitude journal. This is something very different that I've actually never embarked on before. There's some intentions that have come to mind in my life. Some very specific things that I want to address. I need a way to journal that. I need a way to maybe stamp it out, maybe add a photo. I need a way to plot a graph if I need to check off days. So as I was thinking through this, I knew I wanted to go about a journal that was easy to access with these signatures that had a hard cover so that it had some long-term endurance to it. And that was going to be creative and crafty, something I'm going to want to open up and work on because it's going to take a little bit of work and effort. So thank you so much for watching this. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you gained something from uh, my learning experience. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd super appreciate that. Let me know if you have any questions. All supplies are listed in the description and you support this channel by clicking through those with no cost to you. And I will see you in the next video.